Good morning, YouTube. So while I was working on refurbishing these door handle bezels here, one of the other problems I decided I needed to fix was the power window switch. Because you can see, nothing happens here. In fact, the switch just kind of flops around and it's actually broken off here. This is in my 1985 Toyota 4Runner, and these are the factory power window switches. And I've had trouble with the passenger side switch since I purchased the truck. And probably 20 years ago, I made a repair to this. And the problem with these switches is the way they're constructed. There's this bezel on the outside where the rocker is. And then behind the door panel is the guts of the switch. It has all the springy brass contacts. And then this rocker pushes on those brass contacts. And so in, inside here, you've basically got a double pole, double throw switch. And the way this switch is held together, there's two screws that come in to the plastic from behind and the problem is when you push the rocker switch down to push those contacts closed you're pushing against those two screws and, and those screws just go into plastic they're just self-tapping screws so let me get this apart and I'll show you what it looks like inside okay I got the switch out of there and Kind of as I expected, the thing basically exploded when I tried to take it apart. So you've got this piece is stuck behind the door panel. It has these four tabs that hold it back there. And then you've got these two screws here. The plastic has broken off there that that one was screwed into. And this one was still screwed in. And that was the repair I did probably 20 years ago. What I did was I filled this whole piece with some epoxy resin and then I used a Dremel on a little holder to sort of mill out the plastic here. You can see where I kind of milled out a slot there on each side just so that everything could go back together. In fact, this broke off the uh, side there. That piece broke off. The way this works is this rocker sits inside here so basically, as you push the rocker in, you're pushing this back and putting tension on those screws, and they just rip out of the plastic. And this plastic is just so brittle after 35, 36 years that it just falls apart. You know, I was thinking I might try to duplicate the repair that I did 20 years ago, but seeing the, the condition that this is in, I don't think that was a possibility. So I found a company called Switch Doctor that sells new switches. So I just finally got this in the other day. It's got the same six position five pin connector. This one, it's a much better design. I don't know if this is a later model Toyota switch. I don't know if that's a part number on there, but uh, Anyway, this switch is a much better construction. It still has these four tabs, so you push it through the hole and then fold the tabs over. But it has physical clips here on both sides. There's two clips holding the whole switch together. There's no screws involved. And it's a really nice click action switch. So I think what I'm gonna do is I just wanna first plug this in and see if it works here. Okay, so I've gone and plugged the switch in. I don't know which way is up. Oh, that's down. Okay, so it has to go like this. All right. It works, so yeah, that's down. Yeah, it is a little bit different than the original. It has this extra trim ring around there. Really reasonable price on the switch. You know, when I saw the price of a new switch, I figured it's not worth my time to even think about repairing this. And after I took it apart, it's like there's no repairing this. For a while, I was thinking, well, maybe I could 3D print a new one of these and then maybe put some better screw holes in there, maybe even go through, have a screw that goes all the way through with a nut on it or something. But 
the amount of time to design something like that versus the cost of a new switch it just didn't make sense at all. The switch pictured on their web page is that black color and there's no option to choose a color when you order this. So that was one reason I decided to use paint to repair these door handle bezels because I can paint that switch housing as well with the same paint and so now this and this will be the same color and I'll get rid of some of this other plastic that's you know faded these window switches are all mechanical there is what they call a power window relay up in the kick panel. I showed you that in the uh, flasher video. In the 85 Forerunner, all the power window relay does is it turns on power to the power windows when the ignition key goes to the accessory position. I just bypassed that relay, took the relay out, and then just jumpered the 30 and 87 terminals together so that there's power all the time. The wires come from the power window relay that's down in the kick panel area. They come up to that switch there, and there's a, a double pole, double throw switch. And then the wires go back through the door, across the dash. Then the wires come into the door, into this switch, and then down to the power window motor. So the passenger side window has a lot of wire to run that power through. So one of the problems is if you use the switch on the driver's side, the power window motor is a little bit weaker because it's got all that extra wiring to go through versus if you switch it right here, it tends to have a little more power so I scuffed it up with a Scotch-Brite pad until all the gloss was gone, gave it a coat of paint, and then a second coat after that dried, and that pretty much covered everything. And then I hit it with Scotch-Brite again, smoothed it down, and put a third coat on. I just want to give it a fourth coat here because this part here is going to be subject to wear. You know, every time you hit the button, you're going to be touching this. So I figure I'll give the outside a fourth coat and you can see there it's a little bit shiny and it just takes a little bit like that and you just knock the gloss off of there. So I just work around the four sides. So I've got the switch painted, paint's drying, so I'll probably put that on in the morning, but I need to roll the window up here overnight and the interesting thing I found is the window will not work without this switch plugged in even from the driver side if you don't have something plugged in here it won't work because all the signals from the driver side switch come through and come over to this switch they're not independent both these switches the driver side switch and the passenger side switch are actually wired in series but you can operate it without the rocker you can see that's the switch that the rocker pushes right there there's the normally closed contact and then the normally open is down on the bottom and the same thing here so that's the lower contact normally closed is on top the normally open contacts on the bottom and then this wiper is in between mm -hmm. Okay, we've got the switch installed this morning, so I gave it a total of four coats of paint and let it uh, set up overnight. And then what I did was hit it with a Scotch-Brite pad just to knock off some of the sheen. To get it in, what I found was you have to bend the wires back so they point straight out and then push the uh, switch housing through the opening there. And then you bend the tabs over to hold it in place and then fold the wires back down so that it lays flat back here because there's not a lot of room behind the switch. This switch has a little bit longer cable coming off of the switch than the factory one so you kind of have to loop it around under there and then get all the push rivets back in and yeah it works really nice. I can go clear to the top and the bottom. See, if you found that helpful give the video a thumbs up and as always thanks for watching.